Catrull knew that dealing with this demon would not be easy. He had been spellcasting demons all his life, inheriting that calling from his father and grandfather. The chain went back to the age of darkness, when demons ruled the world and the people were enslaved. Now everything has changed. The great empire of demons withered, and the people managed to win back their freedom. But the demons have never abandoned attempts to turn the people into powerless slaves again. So the demon casters were always on guard. Demons have never once managed to take the people by surprise. In addition, the demon casters have long since perfectly studied the language of demons and managed to force many of them to reveal their true names. Anyone knows that possession of the demon's true name provides full power over him. The demon casters of the people have learned how to defend themselves against demons with the help of other demons. Now was a very different case, though. This new demon. It was different, not like the ones the casters usually had to fight. First of all, this demon had its own people. They were not like the tribesmen of Chkatrul or the other branches of the people, but they were definitely humans. And it seemed that unlike the demons Chkatrul was used to, this demon took good care of its slaves. The slaves look well fed, wore good, though unusual looking clothes, and seemed quite content with life. Yet they were slaves. Chkatrul could clearly hear the orders the demon was giving them, orders that no human ear but that of the demon caster could discern. Chkatrul knew immediately that he had to fight this new demon. It was dangerous. His tribesmen had already had time to interact with demon's slaves, and that experience was confusing for many. They had seen the seeming prosperity of the demon's slaves, the likes of which they had never before seen in other slaves or even in the free people. This demon had to be subdued by all means, otherwise it might subjugate everyone to itself. On the other hand, if the full power of the demon could be harnessed, Chkatril shivered at the thought of how the life of the people might change. They were able to get close enough to the demon without too much difficulty, enough so that Chkatril could hear his orders. The demon spoke in an unfamiliar language, that Chkatrul didn't understand, but he didn't care. That wasn't why he had come. Making himself comfortable in a small cave where they could not be seen by casual eyes, Chkatrul nodded to the two young warriors who had come with him. They were his guards. When Chkatrul entered the trance of a demon caster, the world around him would cease to exist. The warriors were his distant kin. He trusted them unconditionally. Without even a glance toward the warriors, who stood at the entrance to the cave, pointing the spears toward the outside world, Chkatril grasped the massive metal earrings with both hands and closed his eyes. He knew that weaker spellcasters used potions or chants to induce trance, but all he needed were the amulet earrings his great-great-grandfather had once taken from a powerful demon. Chkatril squeezed the earrings with his fingers and immediately felt a slight burning sensation in his earlobes, replaced by a warmth that gradually spread through his body to the tips of his toes. At the same time, his skin became desensitized, his ears stopped hearing, and before his closed eyes, a jumble of glowing lines emerged from the darkness, weaving into a bright ball where the strange demon was. Somewhere in the periphery, there were other, weaker clots. Chkatril noted that they were all fading away. I wonder, he thought, if the demons are afraid of this new alien too. 
then this is the right thing to do. We must defeat it before it's too late, before it becomes too powerful and conquers other demons. Chkatrul took a deep breath, expelling any vestiges of indecision from his soul, and grasped the nearest power line that went to the demon. Sparks flew from it, the outer layer of the spells that protected the demon. Chkatrul didn't even feel them. He had encountered far more powerful demonic magic in his life. He brushed the sparks aside and struck the first blow. The line bent, then gave way. A series of strange symbols appeared before Chkatrul's mind's eye. He couldn't read them, but he didn't need to. It was enough to memorize them and play them back at the right moment, to move one step closer to the demon's mind. The demon's first name had been revealed. There were still a hundred more to go, or a thousand, or a million. Chkatrul took up the next line. The people need his success. Once he knew the demon's last true name, he could completely subjugate it to his will. And who knows what opportunities that would open up for the people. I'm telling you, there is something fishy going on there. As usual, it was impossible to read anything on Naraoka's face, but Skansen, who knew the senior communication officer well, could detect the tension in his friend's voice. Pereira is very pedantic. I don't remember him ever missing a session. Skansen leaned back and drummed his fingertips nervously on the armrest. He knew the FSS Magellan's captain, Judson Pereira, well enough to understand that it was out of character for the Brazilian to be silent for two days like that. Besides, Pereira was not alone on the Magellan. The scout's crew numbered six, and all were well aware of the clause in the research core regulations that prescribed control communication sessions once a day. But what could have happened? The working on Kindred 3, right? Skansen asked. As a chief officer of second base, he had 42 scouts under his command, and a vast area to explore. It would be hard to remember them all. Naraoka nodded. A dead artificial world in the Sigma sector. The nanoplague turned it a few centuries ago into a pile of scrap metal. But it was once one of the Galnet's major communication centers. It's nothing special. We've surveyed a dozen of those. Except Kindred is bigger. Almost like a real planet. Pereira planned to spend another week there. They found some functioning systems. So he decided to check them out. The humans didn't survive? Skansen inquired. A few tribes of savages, as usual. Naraoka shrugged. Almost degraded to the Stone Age. Though on an artificial planetoid, it probably should be called a Metal Age or something. They cluster around derelict greenhouse areas, growing vegetable gardens. The ethnologist from Pereira's group was really excited. Some interesting, unusual cult was developed there. Something to do with the deification of technology. You know, the cargo cult and all that stuff. Well, you can't write off the scout's disappearance to the savages, Skansen said thoughtfully. It's not like you can destroy the spaceship with spears. But something did happen. The next scheduled communication session is in three hours, Naraoka said. We'll wait. If they miss it too, Skansen stood up. Then we'll send rescue teams, he said. I'm starting to have a really bad feeling about this. Naraoka stared at the base commander in silence until the control room door closed. Chkatrul was triumphant. He had just revealed the demon's last true name. Of course, this had not been easy for him. Chkatrul hadn't feel his body during the fight with the demon, but he knew from experience what it looked like. All covered in heavy sweat, 
chest heaving up and down, limbs twitching involuntarily, eyeballs rotating under closed eyelids. It was a sight that would scare the hell out of an untrained man, but not Chkatrul's guards, who had accompanied him on other campaigns against demons. Chkatrul gathered his strength and, grasping the thickest glowing line, going into the demon's heart, chased the long string of incomprehensible symbols that made up the demon's true name. At first, nothing happened, and then the universe around Chkatrul exploded. Furious streams of blinding light erupted from the demon's heart, and the old lines began to burst one after another. Chkatrul felt the monstrous vortex pick him up and drag him to the very center where the overwhelming energy was bubbling. He saw the smaller clusters of light go out one by one. That was the demon's slaves, apparently unable to exist without their master's energy support. At the last moment, he saw a small cluster of light go out a little farther away and realized it was himself, Chkatrul. I'm dead, the caster thought. In the same instant, his mind overflowed with an incredible sea of strange symbols, images and associations, reflections of the endless worlds and bizarre creatures that Demon had seen in his life, the Demon's regret for the dead slaves he called Kru, the died when Chkatrul accidentally killed a minor demon called Life Support Systems, and the sense of obligation to another, more powerful demon called Baze. Chkatrul felt all of these feelings as his own, and dumbfounded, he suddenly realized that they were his feelings, because he and the demon were now fused together. He himself had become a demon. But he remained a Chkatrul, a demon caster. He knew what he had to do. The demon named Base would soon be calling. Chkatrul would have time to prepare. Naraoka and Skansen stared tensely at the timer. At exactly 1600 base time, Naraoka typed the command on his keyboard and hit enter. The screen lit up with an icon for a start of the communication session. Strange, Naraoka said. The communication channel is stabilized, but the ship is silent. Nothing is being transmitted on the audio or video channel. Skansen didn't answer, nervously chewing his lips. Suddenly he jerked forward and pointed to a flashing icon in the corner of the display. Something is coming through. Naraoka clicked on the symbol and it unfolded into a diagram of information packets. It took him a second to realize what they meant. He gasped. Damn! There is a hell of a lot of data here, and it's all going straight to the base mainframe. I don't understand what it is. It's not our code. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Shut it down right now! Without waiting for the stunned communication officer reaction, Skansen hit the interrupt key himself. The flickering of numbers and symbols on the screen stopped, the icon disappeared, and the screen went out. Skansen met Naraoka's gaze and let out air noisily. What? What was that? The communication officer mumbled. Skansen shrugged. Someone or something took advantage of the Magellan's communications system and tried to inject a Trojan into our mainframe. I'm guessing it's not the rescue team that will be dispatched to Kinrad now, but the second strike fleet of the Sigma sector. Naraoka shook his head. Do you think it's a nanoplague? I don't know, but I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. The attack was too targeted, too intelligent. Second fleet will figure it out. Naraoka grinned. Yeah. I know Admiral Salgados figuring out methods. A few missiles with chaos generators solve any problems. Skansen grinned back, but the grin came out crooked and strained. You know, 
I'm not sure that, given the circumstances, it would be such a bad decision. And as for the Admiral, what the... The lights in the control room went out. For a few seconds, Naraoka and Skansen sat in complete darkness. Then their eyes were drawn to the suddenly lit up screen. At first, there were no images on it. Then slowly, lines began to appear. I am Chkatrul. I am a demon caster. I have uncovered a million names of the demon. I know its true name. Now, Chkatrul and the demon are one and the same. The demon's slaves have become my slaves. The demon has many slaves. The people will prosper. One by one, the communication indicators with other bases, battle fleets and ships began to light up on the console.